Greetings gamers, my name is Anto and today I want to talk to you about some of the easiest ways that you can make your dungeon draft maps look so much better. This video is sponsored by the Silly Monster Manual, now on Kickstarter, more on them later. So if you're like me and you've been using dungeon draft for a while, sometimes you'll finish a map and you'll step back and you'll look at it and you'll be like, wow, that looks really bad. And I often see people complaining about the dungeon draft look of maps that are made with the program. You get some people who are able to create these beautiful, elaborate looking maps. And then a lot of people try and emulate that and try and make a map in Dungeon Draft. And it looks like a map made in Dungeon Draft. It looks really distinctive and not in a good way. But today I wanna to talk to you about some of the methods I use to make more attractive looking maps within Dungeon Draft. So my first piece of advice, if you're looking to make nicer looking dungeon maps in dungeon draft is change out the assets the base assets in dungeon draft have a very particular look and some people like that and it can work for some styles of map but i find by and large the reason why some maps look like dungeon draft maps is because of those really iconic base assets they're quite low resolution they're quite chunky they're quite cartoony they don't lend themselves to a lot of styles of map making for making more realistic or more attractive looking maps. So my first piece of advice, get rid of them. Just completely replace them. You've got a couple of different options of how to do this. So your first option is the Forgotten Adventures asset pack. They have a complete replacement for the base dungeon draft assets. They're high quality, they're nice resolution. They're a great option. Personally, the assets I like to use are by Crossheads Workshop. I'll leave a link to their Patreon down in the description below. They have a near complete replacement for all of the base dungeon draft assets and they've got a whole bunch of other ones. And I personally like their style much more. It's kind of a blend between a more cartoony, almost Studio Ghibli style of asset and then the ultra realism. You get a step up from the base dungeon draft assets, but you still get a nice fantasy feel to them. To show you how much of a difference this can make, I remade the Elf Song Tavern, which is the first location from the Descent into Avernus adventure in Dungeon Draft. I use the base assets and then I also use the Crosshead Workshop assets. And you can see side by side how much of a difference it makes already just switching out the base assets for something a little more upscaled, a little higher resolution, a slightly different style. It already makes a massive impact. But we can take this one step further to make something that looks even more impressive. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps the channel out, helps it reach people and all the algorithm feeding stuff. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button because I make a bunch of RPG content every week just like this video. So the approach that we're going to take to really up our levels of quality for our map is with light, shadow and texture. And what do I mean by this? Well, in Dungeon Draft, every object can cast a shadow as part of the base operation of the program. Don't use that, turn it off. The shadows are a nice option, but they are, they're too stark, they're, they're too contrasting, they're too rigid, they're too straight. They don't look natural when you really start to layer them up and you're trying to make something that looks more realistic. Instead, what I recommend is you pick up a shadow asset pack. I use Krager's Shadows. I'll leave a link in the doobly-doo like everything else. And these are just a bunch of stamps with different opacities of shadow that you can color, you can tint, you can add them around your map. They have path versions of the shadow as well as placeable objects. And they are really useful for adding a huge amount of dimension to your map. Now, the way I like to approach adding shadows to the map is I like to work in layers. So I'll start off and I'll place my light so I know where my light source is that's gonna be casting these shadows. And then I work from the ground up. So anything that is touching the ground, so we're talking chairs, we're talking tables, anything like that that doesn't have another object on top of it gets shadows applied to the same layer. So if we have a table and several chairs, I'll place the chairs first and they'll cast shadows onto the ground. Then I'll go up a layer, I'll place the table and the table will cast shadow on the chairs. And it's using the layer tool and the over under option in Dungeon Draft that really helps you start build 
that complex looking web of shadows that makes a scene look much more realistic. Another thing you can do with shadows is use smaller stamps to convey a very specific shape. And this is one of the best ways to make your shadows feel real. So if we look near the fireplace in this Al Song Tavern map, you can see that there is a bottle there. And I've gone in and I've added a shadow that mimics the outline of that bottle, complete with the handle and the taper and neck. And what this does is it makes it feel like that shadow is really being cast. Instead of just a bunch of blobs or some straight lines, you have a fairly complex shape that would be cast by the light present on your map. You don't need to do this for everything, but just in a few key places can really trick the viewer's brain into going, ah, there is light here and it is casting actual shadow. Another thing that you wanna consider when you're working with shadow is intensity. Same with light. You want some parts to be brighter and darker than other parts. And the way you can achieve this is by layering those shadow stamps on top of each other. You can see in this example here, over on the left-hand side of the map, we've got several little alcoves with tables and chairs in them. And on the exterior of one of those, there is a torch. Now that torch is gonna to be cast in light and the shadows close closest to that torch immediately opposite the wall are going to be the darkest because they're getting the least direct light as you go up you can see the shadows in those entryways of the alcove where the torch is they are significantly darker than the shadows in the alcoves of the other booths on that wall and that really helps sell that there is a light source here casting light it tells the eye this is a bright object the things right next to it that be unblocked from it are the darkest shadows and those shadows fall off as you get further away. Same if we look in the kitchen here. In the kitchen there are several light sources and I've tried to give the impression that they're casting longer shadows and the way I've done this is by reducing the size and opacity of my stamp, my shadow stamp, and dragging them away from the tables, from the things that I want to cast shadows, away from the direction of the lights. And this really helps sell that there is light in a room and it is hitting objects and casting shadows. So anytime you're placing your shadows, you really want to consider your light source. So you place your light source first, Anything that is blocking that light is gonna cast a very harsh shadow. And then everything else is gonna have a shadow opposite to the direction of that light source. You can see in the little room that we've got here on the right, all the chairs cast a shadow in the same general direction away from the light source. And before I tell you about the final thing that I think makes Dungeon Draft maps look just so much better, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by the Silly Monster Manual, which is live on Kickstarter now, and is bringing a host of absolutely ludicrous creatures to your tables. Things like the balloon man who makes balloon animals and will bring them to life for your party to encounter and maybe fight. Things like the animated squeaky toy. Things like the magnetic golem which can pull all of your players weapons and equipment towards them and add a really cool dynamic to the fight. Each monster comes complete with lovely artwork as well as stats for you to be able to use it in your fifth edition game and there's a whole bunch of just weird and wonderful monsters for you to really lighten the mood in your game. It'd be perfect, especially if you're playing with kids or you wanted something more lighthearted and not so dark and gritty. A lot of these monsters would be the absolute perfect choice for that. I'll leave a link down to the Kickstarter in the doobly-doo and thanks again to Seeds of War for sponsoring the channel. So the last thing that you want to do to really elevate the look of your dungeon draft maps is add texture and to do this you want to add objects on top of objects. You want to look at how you can impact the scene to make it look more lived in. So with our Elf Song Tavern here as an example, you can see I've gone through and I've started adding a bunch of things to some of the tables. Meals, playing cards, discarded bags of coins, all of these elements make the scene feel much more real than just the flat assets with nothing on them. Same on the south wall down here, there's a coat rack and several pairs of shoes, giving the impression that the people come in and hang up their coats and it shows you some of the functionality of the space. Another thing that I like to do is add little moments of life. So in the storeroom, you can see that there is a bag of vegetables that has tipped over and several rats are eating them. 
And all of these little details, when you apply that to every room across your entire map, makes your map feel significantly more lived in. And just like with everything else, when it comes to detailing, you still wanna work with light and shadow. So when you're placing things on a table, those objects are gonna cast shadows onto the tabletop. And that's where your layers is gonna come in really handy. So you have your table, and then above that you have your object, and you set your shadow to be below that object, and it will sit over the table and cast a shadow onto the table. And doing that is another thing that's really gonna help sell the realism of your environment. And then one final little bonus tip for you, anytime you have walls and they intersect, so whether you have a 90 degree wall or a, a T-junction wall, place a post on there, be it stone or wood, place something to make it so that, that join isn't visible because those joins make it really clear that this has been constructed in a map maker. Whereas if you place posts, it looks like part of the foundation of the building, part of the core structure, and it helps hide those seams, which goes another long way to helping make your maps look better. And by doing all of these things, you can make a massive difference to the overall appearance to your maps. So here we have the base version of the map, the one that was included in the adventure, black and white, pretty simple, shows you the relative position of things, ideal for getting a sense of where things are in combat, but certainly not the most attractive looking map. Then we jump into our base style of dungeon draft map, and I honestly think this looks worse than the black and white version. The textures are low detail, the sizing between things is off, and the basic shadows that come in dungeon draft are really clunky and hard edged and I would rather have the black and white version. Then we move to our upgraded assets and we do nothing else. We don't do any of the extra work of placing items in there or shadows. We just upgrade the assets and immediately I think that looks better, but it does look very flat. Then finally, we come to our dynamic textured version. We've got light, we've got shadow, we have detail on multiple areas of the map. And I think that this does look like a significantly better map. It doesn't take too long to do this. Once you get to the hang of using the layers to add different elements of shadow and texture, once you get used to really quickly getting a base foundation down, building a map that looks like our fourth option, like our finished option, doesn't take a huge amount of time. And I definitely think it's worth it, especially for those hero locations that your players are gonna see a lot of or for where you're gonna have a really important interaction or an encounter, it's worth spending that extra time. For just a random encounter, I would stick with black and white maps. I'd stick to using black and white maps from the books or using things like Dyson Logos maps. I wouldn't bother, unless I had to make something really specific, making a specialized map for that because it's a one and done, you don't need it. But for something that is more important or you're gonna use a lot more of, it's worth spending the time to add that textual detail and it's gonna make your maps look so much better. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below what other asset packs exist that completely replace the base dungeon draft style because I'm only aware of the two. And then we can get a list in the description going so that people will be able to find one that suits the style that they're after. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, do all of the algorithm stuff, and until next time, happy gaming.